Come on, can we rest on our feet tonight? Have your way in this room tonight, Jesus. Come on, let's just lift up our hands all over the building. Hallelujah. And begin to express to God who he is to you on tonight. I decree and declare if we plug in early, if we plug in early, the Lord will work some things out on tonight. Anybody really got any petitions up before God on some things that you need for him to do for you? And I decree and declare if you have faith enough to believe him tonight. Hallelujah. By the time the benediction of this service tonight, whatever you need from the Lord, he will have already provided for you tonight. Come on. But you got to praise him. Come on. You got to lift him up. You can't just rely on us to do that for you tonight. Come on. Hallelujah. 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 But you got to give him glory tonight. Hallelujah. We come to lift him up. We come to declare his holiness in this room. Hallelujah. We come to declare his awesomeness in this room. Come on. Hallelujah. Just lift your hands and keep on speaking well of him. Come on. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Come on. I need to hear your voices tonight. Come on. I know the music has started, but don't let your praise that down. Come on. We bless you, Jesus. We lift you, Jesus. Come on. Come on. You're holy. You're righteous. We love you. Yes, Lord. There's nobody like you, Jesus. Glory to your name. Come on, y'all. Help us lift them up tonight. It's a song we do often. Come on, right here, everybody. Come on, say it. We will worship. Come on. We will worship. Come on, say it. The maker of all things. maker of all things. Come on, say it. He's the almighty God. Almighty. Come on, said to you, our voices. Come on, said, hollow it be. Hollow it be thy name. Come on, all over the room, hollow it be thy name. Thy name. Come on, we'll say that one more time, all over the room. Everybody lift your voice, said. Come on, said, we will worship. Come on, said the maker of all things. Come on, said he is the almighty God. Come on, said to you our voices. Come on, all over the room, said hollow it be. It's a simple word, a simple word saying that he's holy. Come on, a fancy way to call him holy. Hollow it be. Thy name. One more time. Come on, one more time. All over the room. One more time. Come on, say it. Come on, say it. We will worship. Yes, Lord, the maker of all things. Come on, say it. He is the almighty God. Come on, say it. To you, our voices sing. Now, come on, sing. Hallow it be.
New Zion Temple. Come on, it's Wednesday night. Come on, we are in the house of God on tonight. Come on, are you happy to be in the house of God on tonight? Come on. We come to celebrate our leader on tonight. Do me a favor and stand up all over the house on tonight and help me celebrate our leader, our shepherd, our pastor, Bishop Brandon. to you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. I see we have visitors on tonight. Thank you for sharing in this celebration with us on tonight. We are happy that you came out to celebrate our bishop. Amen. Amen. Um, to our online audience, grace and peace to you as well. Listen, we're about to give on tonight. Everyone can play a part in this. Um, we know New Zion Temple that we have been assessed um, so if you want to pay your assessment on tonight, please do. Amen. You can pay your assessment. Um, everyone else, if you would like to join in with us, you can give on tonight a $25 seed. Amen. Um, 25 is not a lot to ask for. Um, you barely can get McDonald's for that these days. Amen. And it don't be fresh, huh? So listen, <laughs> fries don't be fresh. So listen, sow this 25 seed into um, Bishop Jacobs on tonight. Um, everyone, if you're giving assessment, make sure you let finance know. And everyone is more than welcome to give an additional. Um, Bishop is definitely worthy of double honor. Amen. 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 And I thank God for my leader. I don't know about you all, but I thank God for him. And I thank God that we have a leader such as Bishop Jacobs. Amen. So listen, stand up all over the room for me. Yes, Deke. Okay. So those who are doing your assessments, um, Deacon Wing said, put on the envelope that is going to Bishop for his assessment. He said, if you are cash shopping, um, this as well as those that are watching, if you are cash shopping, give Lafay, please put in their Bishop's assessment, Bishop's offering, anniversary. We love Bishop. Just make sure that you're saying that it is going to Bishop Jacobs. Amen. Amen. Stand up all over the room for me um, on tonight. Yes, yes, yes. I pray that everyone will share in the giving on tonight. 25 or above, you can do if you want. Bishop has been a really a blessing to you. Outside your assessment, go ahead and give, give, give. Amen. Amen. I'm waiting for everyone so that we can, um, the doorkeepers are going to lead us out tonight. And I'd love for everyone to walk around. Walk around with your phone, please. Tap the basket. Thank you so much.
opportunity to give online as well. I pray that you was able to give as well. Father, we thank you for the gift and the givers. God, we thank you for everyone who sold on tonight and to Bishop Jacobs. God, I pray, God, that you give it back to them a hundredfold. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Thank you all so much for sharing in the giving on tonight. Here come, Bishop, you're supposed to, it's your birthday week. Oh, you got to introduce the preacher. Well, come on, stand up with me on tonight as our bishop comes to introduce the speaker on tonight. Come on, put your hands. Uh -oh. Put your hands together for Jesus. Emma. That is. Hallelujah. Come on, clap your hands for Jesus. Everybody. Oh, come on, you could do better than that. Come on, you could do better than that. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. We don't have no sorry parties. Tell them we turns up in here. Now, if you believe that, throw your head back and let me hear you shout like you're glad to be in the house of the Lord. One more time. Hallelujah. God is good. God is good. And we love God and we thank God you can have your seats. You can actually turn me down some, Ryan. I think it's the way y'all got this. Y'all can't hear me. Oh, now normally it's the, uh, it's the opposite way. I can't hear y'all. I mean, I, huh? I sound like ready up. Oh, let me not, let me not repeat. Hallelujah. <laughs> Tell me, we're we going to get it right. Well, let's do this because I ain't going to be up here long. Uh, give me, just give me another mic. Come on. Now, I know, let me say this. Let me, let me be bishop at my party. One, two. Oh. Oh, now, y'all like that, but I don't like it up here. We'll, we'll get through it. We'll get through it. Hey Amen. They're going to they gonna work it out. Son. Clap for them. Would you clap for them? I don't think they expected me to. One, two. I don't think they expected me to touch a mic tonight. But I did. Y'all know I can. You know I can. All right. Almost. Huh? Almost. Switch again. Switch again. Come on. Well, you got to get this right for the preacher. Amen. One, two. All right. Can y'all hear me? One, two. All right. For the Lord our God is mighty. We're just gonna sing something till we get it. Hallelujah. We all right now? All right. Clap your hands for the best media sound ministry in the world. Come on. Now, now, Christian, you took volume from me. I think I should trying to get clarity, but I'll take it. Whatever y'all do, as long as the people have it, because I ain't got to do nothing. And I'm going to do my best to just shout tonight. Evil shout. But listen, I am so grateful. For a few brief announcements that I, I do want to give. Somebody say Saturday. Saturday, 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 Saturday. I'm, I'm, I'm harping on this because I need y'all help. We're, going, we're giving away free McDonald's. And then Elder Luanda got to be talked about it. We love you, McDonald's. I don't care what Elder Luanda said. All right. So I'm just <laughs> But no, on Saturday, we're giving away free McDonald's uh, all day in Indianapolis. Uh, we're going to be doing breakfast. And you know what's so crazy? If you ride by the McDonald's we're going to be at in Indianapolis, they're already celebrating my birthday. They got banners and stuff outside. That blessed my heart. I ain't know nothing about it until some of the members drove by and sent me videos of McDonald's turning up for Bishop Jacob's birthday all week. Isn't that amazing? So listen, they are ready for us. They are excited. We're going to be there. Um, those who are volunteering, we're going to be there at 7.30 a.m. Amen. But the, but the free food starts at 8 and we're going to end at 10. I just need volunteers. They have, they're setting up a prayer station at this McDonald's. They're setting up a visitor station. They got all type of stuff they didn't call that I didn't know nothing about. But the man of God said, I'm a man of God. And because I'm a man of God, I'm believing that 
that as you're giving out double cheeseburgers, somebody going to give their life to Christ. Hallelujah. Oh, come on. That deserves a praise. Thank you, Jesus. I have somebody say, I'm believing God for that too. I believe in God. Amen. That, that somebody's going to give their life to Christ. Amen. Come this Saturday. So we'll be in Indianapolis from 8 to 10. And like I said, I need volunteers, volunteers, as we'll be handing out different things concerning New Zion Temple. Amen. And just all of that wonderful stuff. Amen. And then somebody say at 3 p.m. 3 p.m. We'll be right back here. Can y'all uh, put the, I want to be, I don't know the address. So y'all give me the address. At 3 p.m. We'll be in Hammond giving away, uh, uh, say it again, say it again. 3639 East 169th Street. Uh, we'll be there. I need everybody volunteering to be there at 2.30 so we can be prepared um, and just be in place so that we can serve the people, serve the community. I want y'all to be nice, all right? Listen, we're not trying to manipulate folks, so if somebody don't want to take the car, don't take the car. Amen. Hallelujah. Just, just be nice and just tell them Jesus loves you. Amen. Uh, we don't want to be mean to people while we're trying to bless folks. Look at your neighbor and say, leave ghetto at home. <clears throat> oh, they didn't come on. Look at somebody else tell them, leave ghetto at home. Amen. And fabulous. We want you to come. Amen. Excited to love people, to serve people, and to give people Christ. And if you know anybody, I want us to fill the place excited about what God's going to do uh, on um, on this Saturday and all day Sunday. Let me say this. I want to apologize Y'all, I thought I had enough popcorn bags for everybody, but they said we ran out of Garrett's and a whole lot of people didn't get any. Uh, so I'm sorry. Uh, I'll make it up to you. I don't know when, but just, just wait on me. <laughs> wait on me. Amen. But to my, somebody say tonight, amen, they're over there setting up. We have an after party tonight. We're going to go over there and godly turn up in Jesus. Mm, all right. Okay, all right. I just want to make sure, you know, I know we got we got former twerkers and, and I just don't <laughs> former <laughs> I just don't want none of your old habits to come on out. Amen. But we're gonna have a good time. Ain't that right, sister diary? Amen. That's right. <laughs> okay. Amen. We're gonna have a good time in God. Thank God for our first lady. Isn't she lovely tonight? Just beautiful. Amen. Hallelujah. I know they, uh, a lot of people, uh, the traffic is horrible tonight, but I thank you for your press, and I thank you for your sacrifice, and I thank you for all that we're doing. Let's make sure that we give our assessments. Amen. And be a blessing during this time as we enjoy the Lord. Listen, tonight, y'all don't know him yet, but you will know him by the time this man sits down. Some of you all may know him. Um, he was Bishop Jake's, one of Bishop Jake's preaching assistants. So when Bishop Jake's was gone, he would call this man to fill his spot at the potter's house. And uh, when, uh, i never forget, I, the first time I saw him, he preached, amen, about the anchor. Throw your anchor. Amen. Yes, sir. And wore it out. And uh, when I started my master's program, I saw him in the room. I said, oh, my God, that's Pastor Jimmy Rawson. So, of course, I text all the preachers, Aaron and all of them. I said, y'all, guess who I'm in class with? And they said, oh, Bishop, you can pray. I said, I know. That's what I'm telling you. Amen. And so um, he has been so kind to me. We have gained a brotherhood, amen, since we've started our master's program together. And there's never a time I'm preaching in the Carolinas that him or he and his wife don't make it to come and see about Bishop Jacobs. Come on, y'all need to praise God for that. And sometimes I say, because, you know, the down south is far. Sometimes he drives an hour, hour and a half just to come support. And I say, you don't have to do that. And he said, I just need to make sure that the people of God are taking care of you. So tonight we have a big brother that's in this house and I am so grateful, amen, for us. But y'all can clap, let's celebrate the man of God. You have a, 
a major voice, amen, that don't need this platform, amen. He's preaching all over the world, amen, for the likes of Bishop Noel Jones and Bishop Jakes and all that kind of stuff. And he's trying to be humble tonight. And not only will he do that, but then he'll kick Christian off that organ and he will wear that organ out, amen. And uh, 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 he's anointed, this man of God. He's a theologian. Um, he is one that I call and say, what do you think about this text? And I love it because we'll go back and forth. Uh, Christian hates it when he comes out to eat with us because when we go out to eat after I get done preaching, we start debating scripture all night long. And Christian, he gets so tired. He just, one night he just laid across uh, <laughs> the bench as we just kept talking Bible all night long. And so I can't wait to hear his mind tonight and to hear what the Lord is going to uh, have him release unto us. So I want to call you up in maturity as this man challenges us in scripture and theology. So I'm excited. I'm excited. Amen. I'm excited. Amen. I'm, so I'm excited about this man of God. Amen. So listen, after this choir comes. This I'm going to do this. This is what I was going to do. I know some of y'all couldn't change because y'all was coming from work. And all, everybody in the choir, come on up here. Come on up here. I'm, I'm going to take precedence tonight. Come on. That's it. Come on. Come on. Come on. No, Josh and Aaron, I'm not talking to you. Amen. You got to be able to sing a little something. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Come on. Come on, y'all. Y'all didn't have to go to the back. You'd be... Y'all could have been ghetto and just come on. Angelisa, bring that baby over to you. Who, who baby is there? Oh, she went to the bathroom. All right. All right. I'll run. I'm about to say. Okay. There you go. Thank you. See, that's why you need good ushers. That usher. Now, see, ushers, I need y'all to act like that when these babies crying too now. <laughs> the ushers are come get that baby. Come on, child. Get out of here. You got to. Amen. Listen, after the choir comes in their own way, the next preaching voice you will hear is that of Bishop, amen, Jimmy Ross, Pastor James Rawson, amen, receive him tonight in Jesus' name. Come on, y'all.
Father, in this moment, we pause to tell you thank you. We thank you because you woke us up to brand new mercies. And everything we needed in this day, your hand had already provided. You are faithful and we are grateful. We thank you for bringing us to this hallowed house to stand in this sacred space called sanctuary to give your name the praise, the honor, and you deserve all the glory. Not because we've been faithful, not because we've been good, but simply because you just decided to give us another chance. And for this, we give you praise. I don't know how anybody else feels in this house, Lord, but I want to tell you thank you. For every mountain you brought me over, every trial you've seen me through, for every blessing, I have no trouble saying hallelujah. And for this, well, I think I have company now, Lord, we give you praise. So, Father, I thank you for the healing virtue that flows from Calvary's mountain. You healed us. As a matter of fact, we don't ask you to heal because you already provided it. So we dare not insult your goodness by asking you to do something that you already did. But we simply thank you because you sent your word and it healed them. Tonight, Lord, as we stand in this place, we want to thank you for the shepherd, the angel of this house. We want to thank you for the voice that you have placed in the earth thousands upon thousands. And Father, I dare say millions have been impacted, touched, and affected by his life and ministry. Thank you for his yes tonight. We're all made better because of his yes and his sacrifice. And I pray tonight, Lord, that something be done and said in this moment that does something so incredible in his spirit. Give him the boost, give him the energy that it takes to continue on. Not only he, but his lovely wife and family. God, do something in this place tonight for someone and even online. Let someone be affected by the gospel that is shared tonight. We take no credit, but we give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. We give you all the honor. Let no flesh glory in your presence. And we thank you now for sending your word and let it heal. We thank you now for deliverance. We thank you in the midst of the celebration. We thank you for souls being saved, lives being changed. We thank you in this year of expansion. We thank you for new territories. It's in the strong, powerful name of the Lord Jesus, we pray and thank you for it. And every glad heart, put your hands together, open your mouth, and give God the kind of praise. Now, let, let me just say on the onset, I'm acutely aware of how we are when we don't know people. And I get it. I'm probably the same way. Who is that? We're we, we going to see. But I'm not really talking about me. I'm talking about the God that woke you up this morning. I said, give him that kind of praise. If he's worthy of anything, give him that kind of praise. Open your mouth and shout unto God. Come on, shout unto God. Don't play with it, church. Shout unto God. Hallelujah. The Lord bless you. You may be seated. I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear their other be made glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together for God is our refuge and our strength. Very present help in the time of trouble. Therefore, will we not fear though the earth be removed, the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. Great is the Lord. I'm just looking for the church and greatly to be praised in the city of our God in the mountain of his holiness. Beautiful for situation is not Zion on the north. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. 
what a mighty, what a majestic, what a magnanimous God. And if you know who I'm talking about, come on, give that God that kind of praise. Come on, church. Oh, come on, church. Thank you. Jesus, you brought me all the way. You carried my burdens every day. Such a wonderful Savior. I've never known you to fail me. Make me feel at home. Jesus, you brought me. Thank God you brought me all the way. Jesus, you brought me all the way. Yes, hey! And you carried my burdens every day. I'm not a singer, I'm a praiser. You're such a wonderful Savior. I, I, I never known you to fail me. Jesus, you brought me. Yes, sir. All, all the way, all the way. Y'all here tonight? All the way. What I feel is going to be a good night. All the way. My, my, my. All the way. All the way. All the way. He brought me. Come on, Zion. He brought me. He brought me. Clap your hands like thunder and say it. He brought me. Oh, he brought me. Oh, he brought me. Well, the one thing I have made up in my mind that after approximately two and a half years, of living under the threat of every time you would cough, every time you would touch someone, every time they would sneeze, every time you would go out, living under the threat that potentially you could catch something and contract something that could take your life. And over a million people that we used to enjoy their company are no longer here anymore. I made up my mind that every time, I made up my mind I'm never gonna be a cheerleader again in the pulpit. And I made up my mind that every time I think about the fact that I'm still here, nobody's gonna have to push me to praise him. But when I think of the goodness of Jesus, The Lord said something to me a little while ago because, you know, as a praising preacher and as an exhorter, you want people to connect with you. You want people to respond. And you have to be careful sometimes that you don't take it personal when they don't respond. And uh, I will be honest, I, I took it personal. I used to take it personal. Y'all sitting there and I get to chide in the saints. Y'all sitting there like Alice in Wonderland and all that kind of stuff. And the Lord said to me, he said, son, don't take it personal. He said, they ain't thinking about me. I said, um, what do you mean? He said, they ain't thinking about me. He said, because it's impossible to think about me and not praise me. Okay, I'm going to check the room for a moment. I just need you to think about the last time you were sick, who healed you? I just need you to think about the last time you needed money, who made a way for you? I'm just, gonna, I'm just checking the scene. I need you to think about the last time you cried, who dried your tears? See, you can't think about him and not thank him. You can't think and not thank him. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Lord bless you tonight. You, you may take your liberties and be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Be seated. Be seated. You may take your liberties and be seated. Thank the Lord. Hallelujah. I am um, beyond. Thank you. Well, don't do that. Y'all be seated because I know y'all. Y'all don't think I know you, but I feel like I know you, so 
my gratitude and with humble heart I stand here tonight in this hallowed house to give God praise and to celebrate along with you these tremendous leaders that God has given you. Now let me say this, New Zion Temple is a great ministry. Okay, try it again. Is this New Zion Temple? New Zion Temple is a great ministry. New Zion Temple Church is a great ministry. But there can be no great ministry without a great minister. So God knew that you would be a great people, so he sent you a great leader. I need you to give God praise for the, one of the greatest leaders in the whole entire world, one of the greatest voices in the kingdom today. Come on, let's thank God and honor his grace. The Honorable Bishop Brandon Jacob Sr., come on. Make some noise. Come on, let him know. Let him know. Paul said, Paul said, Galatians chapter 1, verse 27, I believe it is, whatever the number is, it's the last verse in that first chapter. He said, and they glorified God uh, the King James Version says they glorify God in me. But the NIV, I believe it says, and they glorify God because of me. It's interesting that Paul would say that to that church because he had so many, so much difficulty with them. Uh, he, it, that was the church he had to tell them that you were foolish. Yes. Foolish Galatians. Like he says, well, you know, I, I got to straighten out stuff. Y'all shout, but y'all foolish. You know, he, he had to deal with all of that. But he said, but they glorify God because of me. I want to ask you a question. What do people say when you show up? What do you say when Bishop Jacobs walks in the pulpit? I tell you what I say. Thank you, Lord. Because we receive now another word for our lives. I want you to take a few seconds and not just applaud him. But I want you to glorify God because of your leader. Come on. Come on. The labor. The labor. The gifting. The anointing. I need you now to raise your voice. Whether you realize it or not, that's really sometimes all we need is to know that what we do is making a difference. It's really the fuel that keeps us going. And while I do not know uh, Lady Jacobs extensively, I've just had the pr privilege of physically meeting her in person, but I feel like I know you through experience, and this is what I'll say. Because I know what a first lady does, having lived with one uh, for the last 34 years of my life. And well, not, I ain't been pastoring that long, but my wife, you know, 20 years. Um, a lot of times people give a lot of credit and a lot of accolades to the front man. But there is a burden and there is a strength that a first lady, the wife of a leader endures and has that she never has to say anything but the fact that he does what he does on the level that he does it is indicative of the fact that he has a strong woman who has been adjusted I'm going to say this she's been adjusted she didn't marry a profession she married a person and she's had to make adjustments to be able to share this man of God with the world. The sacrifices and these beautiful, amazing children. I think we ought to celebrate them as well because nobody talks to them. Nobody talks about them. But while you have the benefit of deciding 
whether you're going to come to church or not. You have the benefit of deciding whether you're going to spend time with your kids or not. They have to be subjected to sometimes the sacrifices of ministry parents. And I know what it is. I've raised two sons, and I know what it is. I know what it is to try to figure out being on the road and trying to figure out how you manage home. and Make sure that you don't bring the road home. Make sure that you have enough energy and they, ha they understand that you have... They have your attention and sometimes you are dog tired and don't feel like being bothered with nobody, even yourself. And you have to understand how to balance that. And sometimes the children have to deal with, in fact, the absence. And sometimes they have to deal with the unspoken pressure and sometimes the contrary spirits of those even in the congregation who take pot shots at the family. Oh boy, that ain't going so good. The children have to live in an environment and worship in an environment. Sometimes not here in New Zion, but in some churches where sometimes the children are mistreated, mishandled, judged harshly. I told my church one time, I said, um, I am not my gift. and You're not going to do this to my family. My sons are just like your son. Right. And at the end of the day, I'm a father. Right. And, uh, <laughs> and I'm a fierce papa bear. And if it's a choice between you and them, you already know you lose. So for God to give this entire family unit the kind of grace and the kind of love to embrace all of you I think we need to amp up our love and appreciation for 15 years of consistency. Come on, church. The bishop, the lady, the children, come on. Come on, church. So you may be seated. I am, I am, I am so blessed to be here with this man now, I will tell you this, uh, I'm, I'm probably talking to talk my nerves out because um, you are in no dearth, you are in no need of a preacher. You, y'all, y'all are one of the only churches in the world don't we ever need a guest preacher. I, I mean, just don't we ever. <laughs> it's one of the greatest voices in the world. I have been a huge fan from afar just to watch the anointing and the grace upon his life. Oh, God, Bishop Jacobs has sh shaken the world. I said, Bishop Jacobs has shaken the world. There is a thunder, there is a verbosity, there is a strength in his voice that is fueled by the gospel and the anointing of God that has taken him the length and breadth of this country. He is like James Brown, the hardest working man. It's not show business, but I'm telling you right now, I don't even understand how he does it. Uh, and I have an amazing respect for him and what God has raised him up to do. And when we physically met, we were both enamored. And I'm looking at him like, you gotta be crazy. You ain't talking about me. You are the one. And, um, and then we share, uh, as he spoke, we share in our studies <laughs> at the MDiv program at the Samuel DeWitt Proctor School of Theology. Thank the Lord I'll be getting out, hallelujah, really, really soon. <laughs> but uh, we're sitting in class and texting each other, did he just really say that? And you know, Bishop saved for real. Now, y'all act like y'all don't know him. I mean, he saved for real. He texted me, the blood of Jesus. I ain't believe, I ain't receiving this. Then. You know, I got my little theological mind open, you know. I'm like, oh, um, uh, let's think about this. Bishop is like, the blood of Jesus. This is not right. That ain't what the book said. But thank God in this hour of compromise, you've got a preacher of righteousness.
And with all that God has graced him and graces him to do, he is the same all the time. The humility that he walks in cannot be confused with the power that he possesses. Don't ever take the humility for weakness. God has given you a leader who has power with God and power with man. And I simply say this, your eyes haven't seen. And I, I, I probably want to tell you that um, your ears haven't heard. I got another idea I think I want to drop on you. It hadn't even entered your heart. Y'all ain't even had a conversation about the things that God has in store. But the text says, but he has revealed it to us by his spirit. I don't need everybody, but I just need about seven of you to just to holler right now. By the spirit, I know we're going somewhere. I know it in my spirit. My knower knows. It won't always be like this. All right, let's, let's get to the word of the Lord. But sooner or later, well, more sooner than later. A few weeks ago, I was in the land of the Bible. I was in the Holy Lands. I was in Israel. And um, as I was there, it's changed my life forever. And I'm going to drag Bishop and Lady Jacobs to Israel with me the next time. <laughs> Thank God. It's an amazing trip. But um, uh, I was there, and then we came back, and I began to think about the fact that we just celebrated Rosh Hashanah, and Yom Kippur, and now in the Feast of the Tabernacles, and we're moving in, we've moved into the year of the Lord, 5783. That year is the year of expansion. Another word there to be understood for this year, to, to describe this year in God, is the year of breakthrough. I came all the way to Hammond, Indiana tonight to announce to somebody your new year has already started. Not, not enough of y'all. Your new year has already started and it is the year of expansion. It is the year of breakthrough. And this is only for the other 30 screamers. It's the year of your reward. I don't need everybody, but I need you to holler down your road and say, God, go make it up to you. Not enough of y'all. You told the wrong person. Find the right person. Find you a praiser and holler at him and say, neighbor, oh neighbor, God's about to make it up for you. You need some Bible? They that sow in tears. Read. All right. Second Chronicles chapter number 20 is where my attention. Hey! For all of your problems in the pandemic, God's about to make it up to you. And this new building was a precursor to where God is taking this ministry. I tell you why God is going to bless you in this season? Because this is a season where you don't make no sense. If he blesses you when everything is, is flourishing, you won't give him the glory. You won't recognize it. But he's going to bless you now. I need you to talk to somebody tell him he's going to bless you now. Because it ain't going to make no sense to you or your enemies. Because the devil thought that your last blow was going to be your last blow. But I need somebody in this house to just stop your right foot like you mean it and say, I'm still here. All right. It's 820. Oh! Oh! Yes, Lord. Thank you. All right, let's, 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 um.
Well, I feel like there's about two or three on each row that got a poison in their, in their system that they're trying to get it out. Just holler down your, your row and say, I just need to get this out. One, two, three, praise it. Chronicles chapter number 20, very familiar passage of scripture, however, mm. y'all are not going to kill me tonight, I promise, I, I feel y'all trying to kill me, Pastor Aaron, I feel, I feel, let me read this Bible and, uh, and uh, give you a little lesson that the Lord gave me. And uh, whatever I don't do, Bishop is going to grab the mic. And uh, <laughs> y'all going to remember we had a word from the Lord tonight. Second Chronicles chapter number 20, verse 15. is where my attention has been arrested for this preachment. And um, uh, uh, let's start reading at verse 14. How about that? Then upon Jeaziel, the son of Zechariah, and the son of Benaniah, the son of Jael, the son of Metaniah, a Levite, then upon Jeaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaniah, and the son of Jael, Jael, and the son of Metaniah, a Levite of the sons of Asap, came the Spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. And he said, Hearken ye, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. And thou, King Joseph, Jehoshaphat, thus saith the Lord unto you, Be not afraid nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Tomorrow go ye down against them. Behold, they come up by the cliff of Ziz, and ye shall find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jeruel. You should not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves, stand ye still, and see the salvation of the Lord with you. O Judah and Jerusalem, fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground, and all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before the Lord, worshiping the Lord, and the Levites of the children of the Kohathites and of the children of the Korites stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with a loud voice on high. And they rose up early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, and so shall ye be established. Believe his prophets so shall you prosper. And of the sons of Asap came the spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. So far the scripture, he's a mighty God. Father, into your hands I commit my spirit, my soul, my body. I pray for the release of the anointing. Do it again in Jesus' name. Amen. You may take your liberties and be seated in the presence of the Lord. My attention has been arrested by this text and to give title to what my thoughts and my convictions about this text is tonight. I would like to call your attention uh, to repeating after me by saying God is going to take the pressure off. Turn to your neighbor and say God is taking the pressure off. Mm. Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, can you help me? I, I lost something here. Uh, yeah. The text does not really require much exegetical genius, and I'm grateful because I am not a genius. But as I began to muse upon this text and for this assignment that I have been uh, required be here, I want to talk and perhaps 
you can eavesdrop on a conversation I'll probably have with the Jacobs family. And on the other side of that, I want to give you a little insight as to the reason why we are here celebrating 15 years and where God is going to take us. The challenge with ministry I have discovered is that it comes with a certain amount of stress attached to it that no one is either truly prepared for, nor are we told that this would be the reality. God simply calls those who he has laid his hand on and and made a choice about, and then he tells them, go and I'll go with you. He says, I'm going to bless you. He says, I'm going to use you. But my problem has been he leaves out the details. He never, ever privies us to the details. And the reason why I think he doesn't tell us is because I know the reason why he don't tell me is because he knows that if I have the details, I probably would defect. I probably would decline the offer because nobody told me that people that you love would turn on you. Nobody told me that people that you do the most for would have a short season in your life. It it is so, nobody tells me that, nobody tells us that you're going to have to walk through some very dark seasons and some difficult days in which you cannot even articulate what's happening. You just got to keep walking. Mm -hmm. And ministry, brothers and sisters, is not for the weak. It's not for the faint of heart. As a matter of fact, it's called a burden. (laughs) In, in, In the Old Testament, you'll hear often the phrase, the burden of the Lord. That word there is Messiah in the Hebrew. Means load or bearing, utterance, and oracle. That is interesting to me because the prophets of old would say the burden of the Lord is upon me. The burden of the Lord. It is heavy to be an oracle of God because I've got to speak when I don't want to talk. I wish I could talk to you. I have an assignment to to give you a word when I don't feel like talking to anybody. The burden of the Lord now is then I've got to say things that perhaps will not tickle your fancy. And because it's a burden, I would love to be able to always give you Garrett's popcorn. But the truth is... There are times when the burden necessitates that I say things that challenges you to grow up in your faith. And um, I've got to run the risk of rolled eyes. I've got to run the risk of wondering if you're going to come back or not. Because in this hour, loyalty is really not the call of the day. (laughs) I'm from the old church. And in the old church, saints just, you know, they were locked in. Hallelujah. They could be reprimanded, corrected, rebuked, and reproved, and they would be locked in. But today, okay, yes, y'all just keep looking straight. I'm not talking about you, but today is a different story. Um, As soon as you challenge people in their walk or challenge their behavior or their conduct, they come to you now declaring, I feel like my season is up. And you are still carrying a burden. Hmm. Uh, Ministry is not for people who are looking for a get-rich-quick scheme. Because I promise you, you give more than you get. And when you see people getting a whole lot, it's because God can trust them to be a conduit of what they receive. Uh, I wish I could talk to some preachers and some young preachers. You better hear me if you got any idea to do this because you don't want to get a nine to five. You better go and fill out some applications because you're going to have to deal with the inconsistencies 
of even financial flow. Yeah. <laughs> it is not easy to do what we do. Now, here is the other side. The caveat is that ministry on the level that Bishop Jacobs and others do it um, is elusive. It is elusive because uh, they make it look so easy. It is so easy for him to flow and for others to flow under this anointing and folk be slain in the Holy Ghost. Y'all know what I'm talking about. It, it seems to be so easy, but can I tell you tonight, it is an illusion. It is not, it is not as easy as it looks. It is simply because God gives grace to the gifted. Uh, I wish I could talk. God puts a grace on the gifted so that they could have no part in uh, bragging and thinking that it comes from them. I am amazed at how God graces us to do what we do. Knowing me like he knows me, I have confessed to him all that I am not. I have told him and I have given him reason. I'm the only one in the room tonight, but I have given God enough reason to disqualify me from standing here. I have deliberately said, if I figure if I just do this and if I miss this mark and if I live like this, he's going to disqualify me himself. But somehow he keeps saying, come here, boy. Somehow he keeps saying, your hand, my hand is still on you. I, after I have told him, I don't want to do this. I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. I don't, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. But however, it is not up to me. It's because uh, he's put a grace on you. I, I don't know about y'all, but I am grace personified. I tell people all the time, if you ever want to see an example of what grace looks like, just look at me. <laughs> well, y'all just sitting there. Let me try it like this. The songwriter said, amazing grace. How sweet the sound. There is a grace that comes on us to do what it is that God has called you to do. And that is not in the absence of challenges. And yes, ministry presents the opportunities for many challenges. And the first area of challenge that I want to address is the internal challenges. Yeah. Nobody really wants to talk about that, but we've got to contend with the internal challenges. You know, like feelings of inadequacy. And I never thought, I never thought, I never thought until uh, the, uh, psychology became my discipline, I never thought that there was such a correlation between theology and spirituality yeah. until I discovered that my psychology shapes my theology. If I cannot think right, then I cannot pray right. If I cannot think think right, then I cannot perceive God right. If my thinking is warped, then my relationships in church are going to be messed up. Uh, let me try it this way. If my psychology, my internal view of me is off, then I'm going to have trouble and difficulty seeing God in my life. Um, okay, you need some Bible. Let me give you some Bible. It was Gideon who suffered with internal uh, psychological debilitation. Uh, the, the angel of the Lord, the Bible says the angel of the Lord, the angel of the Lord, uh, uppercase A. And any time in the scriptures you see an angel, uppercase A, it means that God himself came. God comes to Gideon and says, you are a mighty man of valor. I'm going to try it again. God comes to Gideon and said, you are a mighty man of valor. 
Gideon responds to God by saying, you must have the wrong address. You want my cousin. You want the other folk down the street because you cannot be talking about me. And let me tell you why I know you've got it wrong. Because I am a product of poverty. I am a product of those who are downtrodden. Uh, uh, go a little further. I belong to the poorest tribe in all of Israel. And then my clan is the poorest in the tribe. And then my family is the lowest in the clan. And I am the least in my father's house. Now hear this. God told him you are a mighty man of valor. He tells God you are sadly mistaken. God says, let me try it this way. God says who he, he was. He tells God who he's not. Mm. Uh, and this is all part of the stress. This is all part of the challenges that we deal with. Feelings of inadequacy. Will I be received? Am I making sense? Is this you? Is uh, will they accept me? Am I enough for them? I, I'm just talking about what I'm talking about. Y'all can keep it sitting there looking, keep looking straight because I know you can't relate at all but I believe that there's somebody online who is saying in the chat, I know how that feels to feel inadequate. Uh, anybody in the room knows what it is to feel inadequate. Yeah, you dress up but you are still dealing with feelings of inadequacy. You've got on a suit, but you're still feeling like you don't measure up. Oh, God. Mm, that's why some people act, some people are arrogant. Some people are bougie. Uh, nobody in here, but there are some people who are hard to get along with. It is not because they really think they're that much. It's because they don't think. Because when you understand who you really are, you don't struggle with what other people think about you. I wish I could talk to the right people. You don't waste time worrying about if um, my suit or my outfit is worthy of uh, a man um, attention when I come to church. No, 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 no. You don't sit here worrying about what people think about you when you know who you are. And the most liberating place I've discovered I could ever find in myself is understanding that I don't have it all together. I am not all of that. Yay. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know everything. Y'all ain't gonna help me. I am not the cutest in the, in the bunch. Come on, talk to me. But I am what I am by the grace of God. Mm, and this internal challenge challenges us health challenges us our challenges our health and emotionally and spiritually and even physically and then you've got to deal with the external challenges to include the management of people management i want you to understand uh, what i'm talking about uh, just just tell somebody just tell somebody god's going to take the pressure off he's going to take the yeah he's going to take the pressure off but this is the pressure that you don't hear about this is the pressure that you don't see because the anointing covers it all but um, there's a grace that covers it all but this is the pressure uh, that we deal with we got to uh, make sure that people get along Mm -hmm. it's pressure because we don't want to show partiality it's pressure because you're worrying about who's going to feel offended it's pressure because sometimes I feel like instead of wearing um, a, a robe a cassock or a shirt or shamir I feel like I need to put on a red fire hat you're only helping me a fireman's hat and boots and come out here with a hose because I feel like my job is to put out fires it is the stress of managing people's behaviors because I discovered that people will shout with each other they will dance on each other's church shoes 
they will speak in tongues they will get in the spirit and go hug their enemy but when they come out the spirit will not speak to them oh god and you've got to stand here and manage all of this going on because you know she can't stand her and he don't particularly like him but they both want to serve on the same ministry and you've got to manage the stress of all of this happening and you still expect a word for your life but this is the stress that is going on uh, to manage projects you do know you just didn't just come in this building you do know somebody had to sit down uh, after getting off their knees praying it through uh, somebody had to think it through somebody had to come up with the strategy because too many of us think that we can dance our way I'm sorry I hate to bust your bubble but let me just help you with this these walls are not coming down because you walk around them I'm sorry uh, yeah 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 these lights are not going to be installed and all of this equipment's not going to get here because you shout and take the city somebody's got to come up with a strategic plan as to how we're going to manage the budget Lord help me this is stressful to have a vision from God and the problem with the vision from God I know you want to shout without the vision the people perish thank God we got a visionary but let me tell you the stress of being a visionary the stress of having a vision is is that nobody sees it but you and you've got to communicate to people that don't see what you see that it is already there but can I tell you that a vision is a finished spiritual reality when God gives you a vision it's already done that's why if you've got a dream car if you've got a dream house anybody in here got a dream house I'm concerned nobody oh, you're, oh, oh I know what it is you're already living in it okay I got it um, anybody know what it is to have a dream car that car that, that's that car you want uh, now notice something when you think about it and when you envision it uh, you don't see that car on the assembly line no, no, no. You don't see yourself watching that car come off the assembly line. When you see that car, you don't see the doors getting put on. You don't see the tires being bolted down. No, no, no. When you see it, you see yourself sunroof back. No. Uh, Okay, when you see it, you see yourself riding in a car that's already put together. Come on, ladies, when you see your dream house, you see the drapes already up. Hmm. Oh, I'm sorry, not drapes, the window treatments. Okay, I thought you <laughs> You see the colors already put together. You see the kind of furniture in the house. Come on, talk to me. You do not see hmm, the contractors. You don't see them hanging sheetrock. Oh, the Lord showed me my new house. And I just saw the, um, the foreign workers putting up the sheetrock. No, 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 that's not what you see. You see the house painted you see yourself in that kitchen come on talk to me you see yourself man pushing buttons in your man cave doing your thing enjoying yourself you know why because in your eye it's already finished can I tell you something when God gives you a vision you need to go to bed at night understanding that it's already done he just backs you up and then push the forward button to let you walk through the process of becoming what has already become oh, I wish I could talk oh, look at your neighbor and say neighbor it's already done y'all ain't talking 
I know it sounds cliche, but I need you to hear it. It's already done. I'm just waiting on that which he has showed me to be manifested in the fullness of time because I've got to bring you into a place of maturity so you can handle what I have already determined is yours. So you think this is a nice church, but you do know you better start securing your seat. Okay, y'all quiet. You do know you're going you're gonna to have to start coming early if you want a good seat. You do know you're going to have to go back to the drawing board of how we strategize housing all the saints and all the souls that are about to be. I don't have nobody getting happy. Y'all don't know when to shout here hallelujah hallelujah what am I trying to tell you because the vision says that this place is too small to contain the souls and we've got to work toward the fulfillment not of you just enjoying a new space but enjoying a new place in the kingdom of God the problem with vision is the frustration and I'm almost the way I need to be the frustration is keep the, 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 the frustration I keep having Lady Jacobs is I keep seeing what I don't see oh God you have no idea the frustration that your leader may sometimes feel that you've never seen because they walk out here thank you Jesus after changing the clothes and putting the S on the chest you don't see the red boots you don't see the cape but it's on hallelujah because and come out to see only what you don't see hallelujah but God has a unique way of keeping the vision alive though it tarry wait on it because at the end it's going to speak and it's not going to lie uh, have I asked you to touch your neighbor uh, don't worry it's coming it's coming so then now we got to move into expectation versus experience and my trouble is when my experience is in conflict with my expectation it brings me to a place of disappointment and disappointment brings me to a place of frustration uh, let me back up so you don't miss that uh, when my experiences do not match my expectation I become disappointed and if I be disappointed long enough I become frustrated and frustration is inner anger so I'm not really mad at you but I'm mad because I let what you do affect me so even when you change your behavior I'm still frustrated because why in the world do you even affect me in the first place the reason why I am frustrated is because I expected something out of you that now the experience with you is not matching my expectation I learned a long time ago lower your expectation and you will not be disappointed some of you are mad right now because you expected you out of people and when they didn't give you what you expected you trying hard to recover okay you need some bible let's talk Jeremiah in chapter number 20 says he says to God um, you tricked me you tricked me you deceived me and I was deceived I'm in derision confusion every day everybody's laughing at me oh, the disrespect the slander, the defamation of character, the 
scrutiny is excruciating because all I'm doing is saying what you told me to say. All I am doing is prophesying as I've been instructed. All I'm doing is carrying out the assignment upon my life. And instead of people embracing it, uh, they have turned their back to it. Uh, they are laughing at me because I said what you were going to do uh, and you haven't done it yet. I don't know if this is the right church and if I should bring this up. Uh, but have you ever in your walk with God uh, been in a place where you felt disappointed? Because the prophet put his hands on you, uh, called you by your name uh, and said this is going to happen. Uh, nobody huh mm -hmm. and uh, the bishop said uh, that God was going to turn this thing around uh, and you danced and you ran around uh, believing God and here it is uh, the time has expired uh, and it doesn't seem that God uh, seems to be answering uh, or manifesting what you believed uh, you're not going to tell me I don't care how much Holy Ghost you have uh, it's a little difficult to believe God that he's going to work something out in a year and it takes him longer some of you right now shouted and danced on watch night hallelujah for something that has not manifested yet but can I tell you something he's not a man hey that he should lie neither the son of man that he should be repented of if he said it he's going to do it if he spoke it he's going to make it good hallelujah look at your neighbor and say neighbor if he said this year he's still got time y'all ain't the right ah that was the wrong neighbor look at the right neighbor and say neighbor did you hear what I said whatever he promised you in the, in the beginning he's still got time to perform his good word uh, Jeremiah said you deceived me you tricked me into this hallelujah he said as a matter of fact I think I ought to just draft up my resignation letter and as a matter of fact the Bible says uh, well let me, let me infer what the Bible was in, implying and that is that Jeremiah typed out his resignation letter and right when he was about to push the sin button to send this paper to headquarters God spoke to him grabbed him in his collar said where do you think you're going before you were in your mama's womb I knew you and I had your ordination papers before you even knew your name thank you Jesus not only that hallelujah but I have ordained you and called you to the nations and I don't care what's going on in the middle whatever I promise to do with you has nothing to do with you I'm going to keep my word to myself hallelujah Jeremiah was about to resign but right when he was about to resign uh, he began to stroll down scroll down memory lane and the Bible says I was weary with forbearing and I could not stay for a while I began to muse in my heart the fire began to burn and it was just like fire hmm now I know y'all think I'm talking about dancing and shouting but what Jeremiah was suggesting was the passion was restored the zeal has been renewed and I came to Hammond to tell somebody tonight if God be our helper you're going to walk out of here with renewed passion uh, nobody huh you're going to walk out of here with renewed and restored and refreshed vitality in the spirit I don't know who hurt you but after tonight God said it's over and you're coming out and you're going on to greater I'm almost there Christian I promise you and so and so uh, let's look at the text let's look at the text like, oh God the time is gone but the text is tailored to teach us what to do when you don't know what to do but you got to do something 
Uh, I don't have time to deal with the backdrop of the tax part. Uh, suffice it to say, let me just say this. Jehoshaphat is in a strange place because uh, the, the kings of the other nations have decided uh, to rise up against him in insurrection. Uh, and he had never been here before. His daddy never been here, and his daddy's gone. This is a new era. This is a new experience. And he says, I don't know what I am doing. Hmm. Thank God for a leader that keeps us in the face of God. Because what you have in your leader is someone who doesn't just send you out there and tell you, go ahead, children, reach for God. But every time he comes to the platform, he's showing you what it looks like to reach for God, to pray until things change, to praise him until the very foundations of the enemy's camp he is shaken. I don't hear nobody. Joseph Jehoshaphat has said I don't know what to do he said I don't know what's going on and I don't know what we're gonna do and I got pressure on me and the pressure is oh God that I've got these people that I've got to lead the pressure is that I've got these um, nations that have risen up against us the pressure is that we are not a warring nation because we are Judah we are not the ones who have sword and spear that's not what we do but um, we do have power because our daddy told amen our granddaddy told our father that Judah your, your hands will be around the neck of your enemy in other words amen your praise has so much power that you won't need bow and arrow but your praise is has the power to break the neck of the enemy and the Bible says, Jehoshaphat said, I don't know how to fight. I don't know how to cuss. Y'all ain't going to help me. I don't know how to tell people off. I don't have no strategy as to how we're going to get through this. But I got one thing that I know works for me. I've got pressure. Uh, is all on me uh, I can't sleep at night uh, yeah the old saints used to say uh, can't sleep at night uh, but that's alright uh, because I know Jesus uh, will fix it uh, after a while why don't somebody say yeah uh, shake well I don't know if y'all can uh, but just lean on your neighbor uh, and say neighbor I got pressure on me I got financial pressure on me I got pressure to perform I got pressure to make a decision I got pressure because I got things that I got to change in my life excuse me if I'm not always smiling but it's because the pressure has mounted up on my life I know you see me dancing and you see me shouting in the aisles but I still got pressure on me but I know what to do Jehoshaphat said I'm going to turn to the Lord he said Lord we don't know what to do but we got to do something we have no might against this enemy but we're going to look to you and I heard brother Apollos uh, maybe Paul but I heard brother Apollos echo back to the book of Chronicles and said looking unto Jesus who is the author and the finisher of our faith Jehaziel began to sing what God spoke to him hallelujah now notice this Jehoshaphat called a fast said everybody in New Zion 
we're going to seek the Lord. If you're going to sing, you're going to fast. If you're going to preach, you're going to fast. If you're going to pray, you're going to fast. If you're going to usher, y'all quiet now, you're going to fast. We're turning our plates down and we're going to seek the Lord. For I heard David said, Shall I look to the hills from whence cometh my help? My help comes from the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. And while they were praying, while they were fasting, Jehaziel, I said Jehaziel, not the pastor, but Jehaziel, come here Jehaziel, Jehaziel said, man of God, I got a word from the Lord, thank God for a leader who's not an egomaniac, thank God for a leader who's not arrogant, y'all ain't gonna help me, Thank God you got a leader who knows what gifts are in the house. Jehaziel said, ain't no title in front of my name. I'm not prophet Jehaziel. I'm not bishop Jehaziel. I'm not apostle Jehaziel. I'm not an arch apostle. Y'all ain't helping me. I'm not an evangelist. I'm not any of those things. I'm just simply Jay. I'm just brother Jay. But the Lord told me. I said the Lord told me. Look at your neighbor and say neighbor. I may not be on the scene. And I may not be popular, but don't play me. If I fast, if I pray, God gonna give me a word. And it may be the word that changes your life. Can I tell y'all that some of y'all are missing out on the greatest relationships in the kingdom because they don't have star power and because you don't think that they are somebody you may be missing out on the one God's gonna raise up to save your family you may be missing out on the one that God will give them a word that will encourage your soul Thank you, Jesus. The Bible says that Jehaziel told a man Jehoshaphat, the Lord whispered in my ear in prayer service, and he told me to tell you you don't have to worry about this fight because this fight is not yours. This battle belongs to the Lord. I said, Lord, what are you trying to tell me? What do you want me to say to my brother and sister in the Lord, to the saints at New Zion? The Lord told me to tell you this is the season where he's taking the pressure off. Hey! Y'all ain't y'all don't know when to get happy. I said, the Lord told me to tell you this is the season where what you're worried about in 2020 what you're worried about in 21 and what you're worried about in the beginning of 22 it's over now the Holy Ghost said relax calm down but there is no need for you to war there is no need for you to fight there is no need for you to worry because they that so in tears shall reap in joy shake your neighbor's hand like you're going to shake it off and say neighbor God is taking the pressure off do you hear what I'm saying your next praise is going to be different from last month's praise last year you praised him 
with pressure you praise him with worry you praise him under a whole lot of stress but God told me to tell you I'm about to lift it off of your shoulders and the next time the enemy come in like a flood the spirit of the Lord God is going to lift up a standard turn to your neighbor and say neighbor he's taken the pressure off do you hear me get ready get ready I said get ready to feel a new energy cause he's taking the pressure off of your situation under the, I feel under the spirit of God I feel by the spirit of God somebody's been under financial pressure you've been worried about how you're coming from under all of this financial strain but God told me to tell you I am the Lord that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that you ask or think according to the power that's already working look at your neighbor and tell him it's working in you it's already in you he's taking the pressure off so you can smile again he's taking the pressure off so that you can love again he's taking the pressure off so that you can love again I know they hurt you I know they disappointed you and you closed your heart down and said I'll never be in that place again but it's been pressure it's been lonely it's been troublesome it's been disappointing but God said I'm taking the pressure off of you yeah how's it gonna do it preacher I'm glad you asked the Bible says and because of the anointing the yoke the pressure the hold shall be destroyed because of the anointing I know y'all want to call it you got to be oily but when you understand Isaiah was saying your neck is going to expand God is going to cause your neck to grow until the chain that's been holding you the pressure that's been holding you has got to leave off of you because you're going to grow so big until it won't bother you no more find somebody and tell your neighbor neighbor come on preach to him say neighbor this is the last time that you're under this pressure yeah he's taking it off I don't care how big the budget grows no pressure y'all ain't gonna y'all ain't gonna no they ain't the right one I said I don't care how big the budget grows God said no pressure I don't care how many bills mount up no pressure because you're going to meet every responsibility you're going to meet and exceed what you need for this is I said this is I said this is the year for you to expand find somebody and tell them I feel God stretching out Yay! I feel him growing me I feel him building me I feel him I feel him I feel him expanding me I feel him enlarging you somebody 
I said somebody realize tonight that God is lifting the burden God is taking the pressure God is giving you a joy that's unspeakable and full of glory because where you're going is greater than where you've been your eyes have not seen and your ears have not heard neither has it entered the heart of man the good things that God has I don't know who I'm preaching to yes I do I'm preaching to you 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 and I'm telling you tonight the pressure is coming off I said the pressure I said the pressure I said the pressure I said the pressure oh shucks y'all don't want to listen Bishop let me tell you you have been under pressure I know by the Holy Ghost you've been traveling all over the world growing two churches hallelujah the pressure of managing people the pressure of being a good husband the pressure of being a great father and provider the pressure of being a spiritual counselor when you don't have no answers but God said tonight I'm taking the pressure you gonna sleep like you haven't slept you're gonna smile you've been smiling through it I said you've been smiling through it you've been grinning through it but God said I'm gonna put a smile on your spirit I'm going to put a smile in your soul and the devil ain't going to recognize you because he's used to you operating under the pressure but God I said God is lifting every burden God is lightening the load get ready for new leadership get ready for new people who got your heart get ready for folk who will be benefactors no they will be benefactors to this night ministry they will be benefactors in your life get ready for your phone to ring because God hallelujah he's taken the pressure off they're seeking you out they're gonna put it in your hands they're gonna ask you how much you want what you want to do with it because he's taking get out of your seat find somebody and say hey neighbor God is taking the pressure off of your life and when he takes it off you're going to see clearly you're going to see better and and you're going to see what you never seen you're going to do what you never done because he's taking the pressure off that's enough Jehoshaphat said Oh, thank you. Jehoshaphat said, Hiya. Jehoshaphat said this. He said, I don't know what to do. I want to ask you a question tonight. 
what do you do when you don't know what to do? But you got to do something. Here's the answer. Turn your neighbor and say, neighbor, I got the answer for you. Here's the answer. Do what you know works. Okay, y'all. I promise you, if y'all let me come back, it'll be better. But, but I'm done. I'm done when I say this. If you don't know what to do, you're going to be stuck under the pressure. I told you I'm not a cheerleader, right? I don't push people to do nothing. But if you know what works, I know it's Wednesday, it ain't Sunday. But if you know what works, I'm only looking for, to the people that know what works. I need to find somebody in here that knows what works. Okay. The Bible says this. Elder White, the Bible says that David comes down and Saul puts all his stuff on him. Saul puts all his stuff on him. Said, you're going to need this if you're going to fight him. David took a step and said, I can't do this. This don't work for me. I know, I know. See, this is why I love y'all New Zion. I'll tell you why I love y'all. Because y'all held me together and you taught us all how to praise him in a pandemic. Because while other folk were trying to tell us, curtail it, we were on webinars and they told us you got to cut the length of your service down. That's what they tried to say, brother. And uh, you don't need to do all of that. Yeah. Just sing one song. That's what they tried to say. And, and do a short message because, you know, people's attention, you know, people's attention, they ain't, they ain't for all that long and, and all that, you know, all that stuff. They, they home. Yeah. They don't need all of that. But I'm glad that David yeah. David said, that don't work for me. Don't work for me. <laughs> Y'all put on masks, but we're going to praise him. We're going to dance with the mask on. We ain't turning down the volume, but we turning up the praise because this is what works. I'm going to tell you why y'all too cute tonight because it worked for you. You survived COVID. You lived past COVID. I had COVID two times. But every time I was quarantined, when I got enough strength, I went to YouTube, typed in NZT, and heard Christian in the band. Heard the praise leaders lead me into something with tissue in one hand coughing in another hand holding my chest in another hand I made up my mind I will bless the Lord at all times cause this is what works for me find three people and tell them this is what works y'all can be cute if you want to but I know what works Prayer still works. Praise still works. Shouting still works. Somebody, anybody, everybody, praise him.
Zion, anytime your leader prays, that's your cue. Anytime your leader, with all the burden that's been on him, when he goes to dancing, it ain't for you to sit there and say, I don't feel like I, no, I don't, no, no, no. Tell your neighbor, that's my cue. And God announced in this house tonight that the pressure is coming off. Now I need you to praise him for taking the pressure. I need you to praise him for taking the pressure. told me to tell you this is the year everything changes yes. Yes. your living condition the condition of your life the condition of your heart the condition of your mind I'm healing your mind I'm healing your mind I'm the pressure has made you debil how but tonight he's lifting it Get ready to live again. Get ready to live again. Get ready to live again. Everything in your life is about to change. Now I need y'all to praise God if you believe God's going to...
And the Lord says even now that you've done everything you could do. And the first thing I need to tell you that God says, I heard your prayers. And here's the instruction of the Lord. Don't say another word to them. Because part of your frustration is you're trying to fix it. But God says, I'm taking the family pressure off of you right now. In the name. How? Now I need you to praise him like it's lifted. I need you to praise him like it's lifted. I need y'all to praise him like it's lifted off of her. He's taking the pressure. I said he's taking the pressure. you to do. I need you to literally go find seven people and just pull them on their right shoulder. Not hard because I don't want no fights. But just just symbolically. I just need to pull it like you're pulling something off of them. Say the pressure is coming off. Seven people. Now, now wait. Stop in your track. Stop. Stop. If you do it, listen to me. And I mean this, if you do it as a gimmick, hear this, if you do it as a gimmick, because I don't believe in gimmicks in church. I believe in sober-minded. I think I believe in doing things soberly. If you do it in the spirit, when you pull it off of them, it's coming off of them. Now, if you don't believe that, if you just think it's just something we're going to do, then don't do it. Please don't touch my shoulder. If you playing, because I'm under pressure. So if you're going to do it, I need you to believe God. Now go ahead if you do believe it. When you get to that seventh person, there ought to be a praise. I said there ought to be a praise that you relieve. It's off, it's off. I'm free again. Free to smile, free to live, free to love.
finally I'm going to continue I'm going to praise him one more time praise the Lord hallelujah I'm free text that I did not read said it went to the something like this believe in the Lord your God and so shall you be stable established believe his prophet and you're going to prosper the instruction of the Lord was Everybody with hands in here. For the next 30 seconds, we're going to clap our hands. And something is being released in the atmosphere that's going to change your personal atmosphere. If you believe that God is lifting the pressure, I want everybody in here to put your hands together for 30 seconds and give God praise. up here I hear this I don't know what this means but he says I'm giving you your own address you know I don't know you I've never been here I don't know you but God says I'm giving you your own address Bishop's gonna come and bless your, your door. But it's gonna be your door. I'm restoring your life. I'm restoring your life, saith God. How? Yes, Lord. Thank you. Thank you.
And guess what? All your sisters in here, you're going to have gifts coming. You're going to see a housewoman that you've never seen before. That new place will be fully furnished. Hallelujah. And I need some daughters of Zion to praise them right now. Oh, he's taking the pressure. I said he's taking the pressure. I said he's taking the pressure. I want to slip into that because I feel it. smiling in spite of but God said for you that would praise him he's taking your in spite of smile to a because of smile I need you to praise I need you to praise God because he's getting ready to give you a smile because because of it because I blessed you because I turned it around about when God lifts you. I don't have nobody in here, huh? I said there's something about when God lifts it. Tell your neighbor, I ain't trying to be arrogant, but I really don't care anymore. Because I gave him my cares. Because he told me to cast all my trust in God I know he cares for me on mountains tall or in the stormy sea though billows roll he keeps my soul <laughs> my heavenly father watching I 
I trust in God. I know. Just like my be seen, go pillows, roll. He keeps my soul, my heavenly father watches. Start praising him and does and say something to the Lord if you're grateful that the pressure is coming off. I don't want you to confuse the celebration of it and miss the profundity of what God's trying to say tonight. 
he's taking the pressure off. I said he's taking the pressure off. This is a season, New Zion, where you will do it. You'll work, but you won't struggle. Thank you, Jesus. I don't think you heard me. I said you will work, but you won't struggle. He's taking the struggle out of it. I said he's taking the struggle out of it. And for you that will embrace it, hear this. God's going to give you your joy back for that which you do. Bishop, in these 20 years of pastoring, I found myself, even in recent days, asking the Lord, Lord, just let me enjoy it again. Can I please come to the pulpit and just enjoy it? Can I just make me to hear joy and gladness? Somebody under the sound of my voice, you know what it is to come to church and work for the Lord. And it is very possible to be working for the Lord and ignore your relationship with the Lord of the work. You do it because you've been graced to do it. But Lord, help me enjoy it again. Come on, if that's your, your prayer, lift your hands to the Lord, help me enjoy it again. I really do want to be glad. I want to be glad to do this. I don't want it to be a chore. I don't want it to be a bore. I want to do it and be happy about it. I don't want to just do it because they expect me to do it. I really want to say like David, I was glad. I want to get up in the morning and say, how many giants will I slay today? How many demons will I chase today? How many projects will I complete today? This is your season for completed projects. Not enough of y'all's holler on that. I said this is your season for completed projects. You gonna finish what you hey. You gonna finish what you started. You gonna finish what you started. You gonna hit up on I said you come on side. You gonna finish this time. You gonna finish. Shake it up, Shanda la mo hosia, la ba. Manda la la di osa. Ita la mo hosia, la ba la la di osa. No more disappointments. No more do overs. No more start overs. You gonna finish this time. You gonna finish what you start. You gon' finish. You gon' finish. You gonna finish. You gonna finish. You gon' finish. What you started. You gon' finish it. This time. This time is gonna work. This time is gonna work. This time all the pieces are going to come into play. This time, this time, this time, this time, this time, this time, this time. This time. Oh, shy. This time. I'm going to see you. This time. I'm going to see you. This time. Whatever stronghold. Whatever stronghold has been holding your progress. It's got to let you go this time. As a matter of fact, we're pulling down strongholds in the name of Jesus. Pulling down strongholds in the name of the Lord. Things will be different. Things are going to change. Because we're pulling down strongholds in the name of the Lord pulling down strongholds come on 
in the name of Jesus, pulling down strongholds in the name of the Lord. Things will be different. Things will be different. Come on, declare it. In my home, things will be different. On the job, things will be different. In my personal life, things will be different. In the church, hey, things will be different. Things are going to change. Because we're pulling down strongholds. Listen, I want to engage your mind and your spirit and your thought in an understanding that God does not come just to make changes in your spirit, man. But one of the ways that he tangibly expresses what he's doing on the inside is by the inner workings. The inner workings are by the outer workings, I should say. God is about to change your tax bracket. I say this not in no way. I'm not here. I don't have a contract to be here. We don't do that. My brother didn't say to me, do this, do that. That's not why I'm here but I decree and declare in this house without raising my voice. But I need you to get ready to manage millions. Now everybody that's not saying anything are the folk that don't give, I guess. Now, if the church is going to manage millions, this is why you missed a chance to shout. If the church is about to manage more millions, that means God's going to have to give you a raise. Okay, only, only this section. Only this section. I don't hear enough noise over here for people. I, Talking to a rabbi bishop recently, I discovered that in the J Jewish synagogue and in their system of religious passion and reverence and honor, in a synagogue, 12 men are selected. And these 12 men are responsible for the financial needs of the synagogue. The preacher, the rabbi, never solicits an offering. That's not his job. He reads the Torah. He teaches the law. But he never talks about money because his job is to be the priest. But these 12 men, who are millionaires, by the way, <laughs> y'all gonna get it. These 12 persons, 12 persons are responsible for making sure that all the needs of the synagogue, the temples are met. I'm not talking about in ancient times, I'm talking about now. And they are responsible for making sure that the members tithe and that they give. If you ask a rabbi how much did the synagogue have or how much they make or what was the offering total, they don't know. Because that's not their responsibility. I'm coming down here. The rabbi doesn't know, nor does he worry about it, because every time he comes out, they just tell him it's taken care of. So all he knows is that we got it and we got a whole lot of it. So when he's in his private time, God can give him vision and he doesn't have to wrestle through if we can do it because it's already there. Let's bring all the tithes and offerings into the storehouse so there'll be meat in my house. Meat there is not beef, ribs and stuff. It's not chicken. It's revelation. 
so that you can eat good when you come to the house of God. Okay, so you can get revelation. So you can eat from your man of God. You, we bring the tithe and the offerings into the house so that he is not trying to study, pray, and worry about budgets. Y'all are really quiet. He doesn't worry about budgets. If salaries are going to be met, that's never his concern because these 12 millionaires in New Zion, I mean, in the, in the synagogue, and the resolve is, watch this, the resolve of those 12 millionaires is if nobody gives a dime, we got this. And guess what? The millionaires are sitting here tonight. Now, if you are one, I need you to jump up like you ain't afraid to be one. I need you to holler like you ain't afraid to be one. Now, I need all the millionaires to declare in here, we got this. That's Old Testament. Some of you say, well, that's Old Testament. We ain't on the Old Testament. I gave you a New Testament. The apostle said, let's choose seven men so we ain't got to worry about this. That's what he said. I don't need to be thinking. I need to be praying and studying. Are you hearing me? Yeah. So we're going to choose our seven men, principally speaking, because there's more than seven and they're not just men. Yeah. Full of the Holy Ghost, honest and got good report good rapport and uh, and got money and got thriving businesses everybody in here who's a business owner I need you to see your hands lift your hands all the way up business owners I told you this is the year of expansion Go home and get to work on a bigger plan. Did you say you already started? Did that what you said? All right. I need you. I need you. This is your homework. Don't just, oh, Lord, we, oh, Lord, we, the preacher was long, but he was all right. We, we had a good time. Don't, don't, don't go home and do that. Go home and get out your notebook. Let God give you the idea. Because you're going to shout better on Sunday when you got more money coming on a Friday. I ain't scared of y'all now. I've been up here now. I've been up. I ain't scared of y'all. I ain't scared of y'all. This is what I want you to do tonight. This is what I want you to do tonight. I believe God. I believe God. There are 20 of you. There are, uh, not, not 20 of you. There are 10 of you that can sow $150 with me in here. I want you to do this really quick. I don't believe in no gimmicks. I don't play games. I know I'm not talking about what you've been obligated to do. I'm talking about even above that. See, the first thing is you got to understand poverty is a spirit. You see how quick y'all just suck all the praise out of the room? Just <laughs> poverty is a spirit. It's not a dollar amount. The enemy wants to impoverish your mind. Cause your mind, your mentality be impoverished where you say, oh no, it's Wednesday night, ain't gonna buy, got no $150. Well, when your mind gets free from that, when your mind gets free from that, $150 would be lunch money. Yo, somebody, I said $150 is lunch money. My wife and I went the other day my wife and I went to Red Lobster for lunch. I, I, I was doing something. I said, honey, just, just, what do you want to eat? Now, her favorite restaurant happens to be Red Lobster. Well, no, one of them. Red, Red Lobster. I hate Red Lobster. I hate Red Lobster. Except for the Cheddar Bay Biscuits. But it's, it's like, you know, the food ain't never right. You know, all that kind of stuff. But I was sitting there. We were gazing in each other's eyes. We were sitting there at lunchtime. 
I was in the middle of something. I just I said, let's go to lunch. And while I was looking at her, I, the tears began to roll down my face. I began to cry. She said, what's wrong? I said, honey, I remember when this was an anniversary, special occasion. You'd have to know where, I'm, where I've been. I remember when this was something I had to save up for. Now it's the place I don't even think about. Yesterday before I left home, I went to lunch with a couple of my staff persons. Probably the most expensive restaurant in our little town. And my bill was a few hundred dollars. And I began to cry. I said, Pastor, what's the matter? At first, I'm trying to be big. Nothing. Nothing. Some of my, you know. But I couldn't hold the tears. Because I remember. And without any thought, I reached in my pocket and paid the bill without thinking. Now, that may not mean much to you. But all I want to say is, look where he brought me from. And I'm telling you this. Trust God where you are. He'll take you to where you want to be. There are 10 of you. Get up real quick with $150. Get up right now. Get up right now. I know you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Come on. Come on. There are more of you. I need y'all to celebrate those who are giving right now. Come on. Thank y'all for indulging me. I know it's way too long, but thank you. Thank you for your time. I promise you I ain't always this long. Come on. There are more of you. There are people online. I need you to get online. I need you to do it. God's about to do something. It's been 15 years. Let's celebrate the Lord with this seed. How many is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Y'all keep clapping. Somebody else in here got it. Come on. Come on. Get, get happy. This is a season of celebrating your leader. I ain't raising this money for me. I promise you, we celebrating our leader. Come on. Come on. Y'all keep clapping. Feel a spirit of liberality in this room right now. Come on. Come on. Come on. This is your leader. Keep clapping. There's something. There's, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Look what God is doing. Whether you're giving online or physically, it doesn't matter. Just come on, everybody. I need everybody to do this that can do this. $150. Come on, quickly, quickly. The more you can sow this seed. This is a seed. I'm, belie I'm believing God that there will be a time in your life real soon that $1,000 at a pop any time will never be a problem for you to get. Anybody want to live there? Anybody want to live there? Don't shout about all that stuff and don't want to live there. All right. I didn't have $150. I'm not doing a countdown tonight, but there are those of you that can sow a seed of $100. Get it right now. Get it right now. Stand to your feet. I'm sowing a $100 seed tonight. $100. It's a seed. A seed that leaves your hand never leaves your life. Come on, quickly, 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 quickly. You already know if you have it. You don't have to pray. Get all in the spirit to find out if you got it. You already know if you got it in your possession. Come on. I, I, I'm. This is what I want everybody to do in here tonight. The Lord loves what kind of giver? Has nothing to do with amount. Has everything to do with attitude. Why do we give like this in ranks? Because the Bible says they gave in ranks. And they gave so until Moses had to tell them stop giving. 
I prophesy in this house that there will be so much resource, so many, so many resources that come into this house by, by way of money until we won't even be, we have to figure out what we're going to do with all of it. Can you imagine New Zion affordable housing communities? Hmm? Are you here? And I was talking to Elder White about a project I have before the Lord right now. We're developing, the Lord's blessed us in the pandemic to purchase a new campus and building even on the campus. And one of the things that's dear to my heart is a SCORI, SCORI program the Lord gave me. It's a re-entry Offenders Reentry Initiative, trying to build a workforce training center. People come out of jail, get trained, and are guaranteed jobs. And we're telling corporations, you're going to hire these people. We're going to make them work ready and Jesus ready and rapture ready. Come on, talk to me. One other thing I believe that God wants us to do is provide affordable housing. Can you imagine your church... I need you to imagine this ministry doing those kind of things. Can you imagine what worship is really going to be like? Oh, boy. Everybody in here get the closest seed to anything I ask you to give tonight and stand to your feet. You are not to give, give to be seen, but you are to be seen giving. Everybody get something in your hands. Hallelujah. And if you don't have a dime, stand anyway. Father, I thank you right now for the obedience of your people and the willingness to sow good seed in the good ground. We decree and declare that New Zion is good, seed, good ground. And Father, we command every seed to be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it, and take dominion. In Jesus' name, it is so and so it is. Amen. Amen. As the custom of the house is, please follow. But come giving, if you're physically giving, if you're online certainly honor that. I pray that I helped. I pray that I said something that mattered tonight. And um, my other motive for coming tonight was to make sure that Bishop Jacobs comes to South Carolina to our house. So uh, if he's missing one day, he'll be with me. I love y'all. Windows of heaven are open Fire is falling tonight I've got joy, joy, where's joy? Since Jesus made What did you do, church? Gave him my old filthy garment We'll get Deacon Joy People trying to get That is why I'm happy. That is why. Y'all, Auntie Mel, I see you. Don't these ushers look so good tonight? I'm glad I had a red tie on to match y'all. Made me want to put on a red suit. Y'all look amazing. And I see our nurses in black. I think I am in color scheme. I got my black on with the nurses and my red tie. Come on here. Now, Auntie Mel, take that coat off because you got to go to the after party. All right. Okay, now listen. On the other side of the of the building, I want y'all to go over there. The after party's on Bishop Jacobs. Amen. So uh, now y'all gotta hurry up and get over there because I just we. That's why I've been on my phone, y'all texting so much. Cause the place I ordered special wings tonight, and they didn't deliver them all. So I tried. So. Y'all run over there. I'm, I'm being real serious. I, I wish I was joking. <laughs> so so y'all run over there. We had a whole lot. 
So y'all run over there and you're going to get the ghetto version of this after party tonight. But I tried. Amen. So they've been trying to call them to get some. So I don't know if they were able to get a hold of them to come back. But I, y'all, got, y'all got a little, you may get one wing, but eat that wing. Eat that wing with power. All right. Come on, let's stand on your feet. Thank you for your sacrifice tonight. Thank you for your press tonight. Thank you for what God is doing. Lord, bless this offering and seed. Bless every hand that is sown into my life. And bless, oh God, those who have given assessments. Bless your people who have sacrificed. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your anointing. Lord, bless them wings. I pray that God you'll do for it like you did the fishes and the body loaves. Multiply it so that is more than enough in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ give us safe travel I pray for safe travel for our single women that go in the house alone cover them with your blood in the name of Jesus Christ Lord I even pray oh God for anyone that's going to walk in their house alone tonight whether they be male, female or child or senior cover them with your blood I rebuke evil works And I rebuke, oh God, evil thoughts. Let your angels be seen as men walking with us. Father, we praise you for it. And we give you praise for the victory. Multiply the seed and bless the food in Jesus Christ's name. All those in agreement said, amen. Y'all run over.